Burnout is a condition of job-related stress. Everybody is really at risk of burnout. It's not just the physicians or the advanced practice providers. It's nurses and behavioral health providers and administrative support people. Burnout is really a process of depletion where a person becomes strained by excessive and chronic work stress. The effect can be that you feel like sometimes you're not able to be as effective as you want to be. You can't, you don't feel like you're accomplishing what you'd like because of time limitations and demands. Leading to fatigue and some real impairment in their physical, emotional, mental well-being and then ultimately even leads to behavior changes. There are a lot of contributors to burnout. They can be uh, categorized as sort of system factors as well as individual factors, and they're at play with each other. The system factors tend to be the more, I think, pressing issues that physicians are facing today. And those are things like the amount of time people are asked to spend outside of their typical work hours on charting just to meet regulatory requirements. Just workload compression, so increased requirement to see more and more patients with less time. And then individual factors are things like loss of autonomy, autonomy or loss of meaning, lack of camaraderie or teamwork, just not feeling that sense of human connection that is often a driver of why we went into this practice in the first place. When I think about burnout, particularly in primary care, I think of a, of a sandwich. The sandwich is you have the patient who needs your attention, who needs responsiveness, and then you have a system that demands responsiveness. And when you're the only one, and you're the one responsible for patient care and coordination, that sandwich can feel tighter and tighter. One of the things that people point to with regard to burnout is this belief that they need to, to be infallible, and that reaching out for support has a lot of stigma attached to it. This is particularly difficult for primary care physicians. When we begin to feel burnt out, we will push through those initial symptoms of burnout from a place of being very passionate and mission-driven. And it's only once we're deep, like waiting in burnout, that we can begin to notice some of the behavior changes that have come, some of the psychological and the physical changes that have happened. Dr. Bailey, can I talk to you for a second? Sure, yeah. I think how burnout interrupts a team is by creating a discordance or breaks down the resilience of the team, where the individuals on the team have to act as individuals and no longer can rely on, on the whole team to absorb the stress and also support one another through it. That's part, I think, of team resilience. It doesn't all revolve around, can we do yoga together or can we meditate together? It's something around practice transformation and, and really using um, our ability to take just 30 seconds to communicate in a very intentional way. A team of healthcare providers working in a rural community to provide patient care for probably a far-reaching area without a lot of resources nearby, there are going to be even more pressures on those teams. They're going to have potentially more challenging medical cases, they might feel isolated, and just have fewer resources to draw on. You're alone, um, and it can feel isolating, or at the very least, it takes more effort to connect with supports. Your team may be a um, distance team, it may be a virtual team. And so while the rural environment and acting as that sole provider uh, gives you a lot of autonomy and um, fosters relationships, it can also feel isolating. She needs an after visit summary. Okay. Um, she doesn't have a list of her medications, so if you could give that to her. So resilience is, is the process of responding to stresses that come our way. So one very, very easy intervention to help promote resilience and well-being is just appreciation and gratitude. So how often do you start your day or end your day by telling one person how much you appreciate what they did or something you appreciate about them, even if it's something tiny? 
So I think a really important aspect of a resilient team is that ability to say what needs to be said. It may not always be the favorite topic, it might be a little bit messy, but to have an environment where it's safe to express your concerns and your needs and share some vulnerabilities, that's really how teams work. If you have a sense of positivity, intention, psychological safety, shared values, shared sense of purpose, that's gonna influence maybe the one or two people who might be a little off that day. We want to check in with ourselves, at least monthly. I recommend daily on how am I doing? A flourishing personal physician is inspired by what they're doing. They can feel the flow while they're at work. To flourish, if the positive is higher than the negative, and both are there, and we embrace it, then you're flourishing. What I'd like to change the focus to is focusing on the maintenance of our well-being, is that when we do that, we can rise up into our strengths, we're happy, we maintain more flexible thinking, which makes us better clinicians, better communicators, leads to increased patient satisfaction, we're better team members, and we're a heck of a lot better at home. We don't want to lose physicians from a career that we need people in in order to take care of people. I need care from my physician. My family needs care from physicians. I enjoy providing care. I mean, we're all, we're all in it together. We really are.